Hey gearheads and welcome to Garage Talk. I'm Corey and this is the 2021 Ford Explorer XLT four-wheel drive. And in this video, we are gonna go over some of the features under the hood and inside that make this vehicle perfect for soccer practice. Hit that subscribe button down below and ring the bell so you are notified every time we post a new video. And if you want to see some behind the scenes stuff of what we're driving before it is here on YouTube, go and find us on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok, all at GT Garage Talk. And everything we do, including our award-winning podcast, can be found at gtgaragetalk.com. All right, so under the hood of this bad boy is Ford's 2.3 liter four-cylinder EcoBoost turbocharged engine, which surprisingly makes 300 horsepower and 310 pound-feet of torque. This 90s kid remembers when Camaro Z28s with 5.7 V8 under the hood made that kind of power. This has half the cylinders and can move quite a bit of weight in relative ease. And why is that important? Well, this vehicle has taken over Crown Victoria duties for all of Ford's police interceptor duties. This is actually one of the most popular police cruiser vehicles in existence. So it's a very popular vehicle on top of being Ford's best selling vehicle. That being said, for 2020, we got an all new design. And I actually like this a lot. If you didn't notice from the engine under the hood, this is actually a rear drive biased vehicle. That's right, standard configuration means the rear wheels are doing all the motivating on this vehicle. Moving up front here, you get Ford's new corporate face. You get LED lights and accent lights. I really love it. With the XLT appearance package, you actually get these dark gray, kind of smoked look Explorer across the hood. It matches the grill and matches those 10 spoke 20 inch wheels down on the side. I think this XLT appearance package just brings it uh, when it comes to style. Up front here, we do have LED fog lights and a functional air curtain to actually help get air around the front of this vehicle. Not that this thing is really hurting in aerodynamics in any way. It's actually quite a sleek vehicle. And moving along here to the profile, I think this is perhaps the best profile of any three row midsize SUV. Really accentuating the fact that they move this to rear wheel drive. You have this raising belt line and tapering roof line that just kind of comes back to a point, emphasizing the fastness and the speed of this vehicle while it's sitting still. And you have some nice contours here on the side. It's not just slab slided, it's not bloated and round like the previous generation, you've actually got some nice tasteful contouring here on the side as well. You've got some black plastic cladding, which uh, does rattle a little bit when you close the doors. That's perhaps one of my only real build quality knocks with this is the doors sound a little cheap. That being said, this one does have remote access with proximity key. So there is a little touch sensitive spot on all four doors right here that you can lock it and then to unlock it you just tap your hand on the back of the door and it opens up just like that. All right let's play a little game of fake or functional. First up on the list these air vents up front they are actually functional because they direct air in this vent right here and out into the wheel well to improve aerodynamics around the front of the vehicle. Now, for one last little bit, around here back at the back, this one is probably the most egregious because it's the exhaust tips. They are actually fake and cold weather will tell on you for this one. These exhaust tips, yeah, that's not real. Look, it's 
a turn down because the actual exhaust is coming out down below. They want you to have perpetually clean and cr shiny chrome exhaust tips. So they actually do the dump out underneath. So this actually has the exact same gauge cluster as the Ford Maverick that we recently drove. Check that video out linked up in the corner. It's got analog tack and speedometer and a six inch helper screen that has everything from your fuel economy, what music is playing, any information that you would need as the driver is displayed here on the driver information screen. But as far as the rest of the interior goes, why don't you hop on in and we'll walk through all of the things that make this a great interior. So moving into the interior, this has the two-tone slate and black ActiveX synthetic seats. You actually had to step up to the limited trim to get full leather seats inside, but the two-tone contrast actually helps keep it light and airy in here. And that same two-tone continues onto all the door panels as well. Very nice touch and gives it a upscale feel as you hop in to the Ford Explorer. Moving up front to the dash in this XLT, you do not get the massive 12 inch vertical that almost looks out of place screen. You get a nice size, still kind of tacked on look eight inch screen that does everything from Apple CarPlay to all of your driver controls. In fact, that's how you turn on and off the driver assistance functions that come with Ford's Copilot 360. Not having that 12 inch screen means you get a nice spot here for, I guess, cell phones, though my 12 Pro Max, while plugged in, doesn't really fit much of anywhere in here. There's a cubby here that I think is for the phone or the key, or there's a place down here, I, I, I don't know. But you do get a covered storage spot that has USB-A and USB-C in here with a little spot to pull your cable out without crushing it. Two cup holders, which is very nice. Ford's rotary dial shifter, which say what you will about it, is very functional in the fact that it can shift into park or out of park with or without you. So if you do have the self park feature, all you have to do is hold a button. This one does not have that. Uh, we've got your electronic parking brake, your auto hold for when you're at stoplights, your auto start stop for when you're driving around town, traction control, which Ford has decided to create their own logo for traction control now, even though when you turn it off, the emblem in the dash is actually the standard traction control button. Hill descent control and your drive modes. There are actually seven drive modes in this from tow haul, sport, eco, normal, slippery, trail, and deep snow and sand. And as you cycle through those, you get a nice little animation in the helper screen in between the tack and speedometer that gives you a little idea of what each mode is for. My favorite animation though is for the trail. You get these rocks falling into place. Kind of cool. Moving around, you've got a nice, decent width center console that is not just huge, but benefits from the fact that it actually has a removable tray. So you don't just have a giant cavern down here for anything and everything to get lost in. Nice little tray to hold smaller things and a decent size glove box. As far as materials go, it's soft touch injection molded plastic. You've got this aluminum look plastic and generally nice plastics everywhere you look. The further down you go, the scratchier and noisier the plastics get, but general build quality in here, I can't make much of anything squeak or rattle as you move around in here. Very good build quality from a legacy automaker. All right, moving around to the middle row of the Explorer XLT, you get quite a bit of comfortable space here in the mid row. Standard configuration is these captain's chairs. You have to option up to the 35, 30, 35 split bench seat. In the place of a middle seat, you get this fixed in place plastic bit that has a couple cup holders, maybe a place to maybe store some phones, I don't know, toys, 
treats, whatever you need back here. As far as comfort goes, each seat gets its own armrest. I'm sitting behind myself and I've got plenty of room. The comfort of all these seats is very nice. A lot of cushion, a lot of support in this, and this one actually does recline. This is as far back as it goes, but it's actually a very comfortable seating position riding back here. I could do a cross country road trip in these seats. And added functionality, this does have tri-zone climate control. So you can control either from back here or the gauges up front on the screen, the rear seat climate in this, which actually has roof mounted vents which works amazing for when you've got kids in the back, especially in car seats, especially in the hot Texas summers. Moving back to the rear seat, it's a little bit tighter. It's a 50-50 split bench, and I'm actually going to climb back there next to my son's car seat and show you just how much room is back there. I will note that while the larger sibling to this vehicle, the Expedition, has child seat friendly second row, seats that will fold forward and move forward with a child seat in place. This one does not. The backrest actually moves forward and the whole thing slides. You've got a nice flat spot to set your foot as you climb in here and then you can climb in and get in, in place very easily. You can see I'm much lower to the floor in this third row but my knees aren't in my chin. I've got a decent amount of room. Uh, foot space is more or less a concern back here and perhaps one of the biggest reasons why it's only a two-person seat back here. Not having that center seat makes uh, my right foot feel very welcome back here but even sitting behind myself in the third row I still have plenty of room back here. Back to these seats are carpet covered in case you want to fold everything down and use it for cargo space, which actually works well for my son kicking the back of this seat. But let's head on back and check out the cargo space. Moving around to the back, the styling back here is actually very tastefully done. It's not over styled. You've got some nice contour lines here, not too busy. And you've got that dark gray that accentuates from the wheels, from the Explorer across the, the hood as well. And then these taillights, LED taillights that actually have this nice luminescent glow to them that I really like. You do have a power lift gate that makes getting in and out of the back very easy, like loading up chairs from soccer, soccer practice. And if this isn't enough room for you, because let's face it, some compact SUVs have more space behind the back row, the third row actually folds down quite nicely. This one has manual folding rear seats, but higher trims do come with power folding rear seats. And that opens up quite a bit of cargo space for you to throw anything you might need back there. Moving my backpack out of the way, what SUV would be complete without a little hidden under floor storage back here in the back. So you've got additional space. You can put messy things down here because you have a nice rubberized mat, or you can just put some you know, valuables you wanna hide. I really like the silhouette of this vehicle and so do designers. So they put this nice little Easter egg here for that. And then when it comes to child seats, all four seats back here actually have rear child seat anchors. So my son prefers riding in the very back I'm gonna let them. As far as closing it, you have a button right up here on the hatch. All right, setting off in the 2021 Ford Explorer. This thing is quite competent and it has to be because its competitors are numerous. We have everything from the Toyota Highlander, the Honda Pilot, the Kia Sorento, the Hyundai Santa Fe, the Chevy Traverse, the GMC Acadia, the list goes on and on. This segment is highly, highly competitive and you have to bring your A-game in this segment. This particular XLT has four-wheel drive and is a very competent system in its own right. 
doesn't have locking differentials like the Kia system does, but with your seven drive modes, you can find the right drive mode for the situation that you are in. The engine in this one is the 2.3 liter four cylinder engine that is actually quite competent when you get on it because it does make 300 horsepower and will move surprisingly well for a vehicle of this size. The, the little EcoBoost is no slouch in this vehicle and I'm actually quite impressed. Made it to the 10 speed transmission that was co-developed with GM. This is a very, very good powertrain and platform on which to build. Being that this is a rear wheel drive biased platform, I would say the only true competitors to this platform with its rear drive bias are the two from Stellantis, the Dodge Durango and the Jeep Grand Cherokee L with its third row because both of those are also unibody. Both of those are very comfortable and compliant on road, but have some off-road chops to them as well. And both of those are also rear wheel drive biased. So you have this and then the Jeep and the Durango all with rear wheel drive that actually is a benefit because it means the front wheels aren't doing all the work of pulling you along, pointing you in the right direction and trying to keep you composed all along the way. When they moved the Explorer back to rear wheel drive for 2020, that was a huge plus for me for ride quality and drivability, I think. This, this is a very, very good platform, very quality in all manners of performance. You're not gonna be racing this one, but Ford does make the three liter twin turbo V6 available in the ST that is putting over 400 horsepower down and has the Dodge Durango 392 square in its sights. So if you want performance, Ford gives you options. If you want a family vehicle, Ford gives you options. I'd say this XLT is perhaps the best family rig of all of its trims because there are numerous trims of the Explorer for you to take. There are, there's the base, this XLT, the ST, the Timberline, which is off-road focused, the King Ranch, the Limited, and the Platinum. There is an Explorer for you, no matter what you are looking for. And there is even a plug-in hybrid version for the fuel efficient minded consumer out there. There you have it, Ford's all new Explorer SUV. All new rear wheel drive bias for the 2020 model year and carried over relatively unchanged for both 2021 and 2022. Very competent vehicle that shares its chassis with the police interceptor, which has to be built good because you know the police force will put it to the test. We didn't have any creaks, rattles, bumps, or anything with our time in this one. It is a very competent SUV. That being said, it is in a very crowded market. So is this $45,000 one step up from the base model right for you? Well check out your nearest Ford dealer and see for yourself. You actually get quite a, uh, but quite a much, quite a much. You get quite a much legroom is what I was apparently going to say. So we'll try that one more time. 